Good morning. My name is Sarah Willie LeBreton. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm honored and delighted to accept the invitation of the Board of Trustees to serve as the 12th president of Smith College. Smith alums I have known are among the most thoughtful, energized, intellectually curious, and determined people on the planet. So your reputation precedes you. This is clearly a place where smart, passionate students come to learn, to grow, and to prepare themselves for lives of meaning and purpose. I need to say just a bit about the smart, passionate women who made applying for this position so compelling. Mary Gorman and Panay Varro of Spencer Stewart Executive Search Firm engaged me in wonderful and searching conversations. Board of Trustees Chair Allison Overseth and Search Committee Chair Susan Molyneux described Smith with love and candor. President Kathleen McCartney extended her friendship first on the phone and then in person. Secretary of the College Elena Palladino and Vice President for College Relations and Communications Julia Yeager have moved mountains to help me be here today. But I'm especially grateful to the members of the search committee, your search committee, who, rep <clears throat> who represented Smith admirably, asking difficult questions, and perhaps, since the easy questions never came, preparing me for life among Smithies. <laughs> And life among Smithies includes a beautiful mission. The seriousness of Smith's mission cannot be overstated in a society whose highest institutions reveal a tragic ambivalence about the value and humanity of women. We live in a country that today is largely invested in three fictions, that we all get what we deserve, that we are beyond race, and that the real reason women continue to earn less than men are underrepresented, excuse me, are underrepresented everywhere from Congress to the boardroom and the executive suite is because we want it that way. It's time to expose this genuinely fake news. Of course, Of course, it is not just these fictions that need to be challenged. The nation and the world call for recalibrations of educational communities where mutuality is a higher good than greed, where belonging is a higher value than fitting in, where competition is for the playing field, the debate, robotics, and chess clubs but not for invidious distinctions of student against student. We must communicate with our friends and neighbors in op-eds and wherever we can about the transformational power of higher education, from the collaborative approaches in which it trains students to the intellectual flexibility that is a byproduct of the liberal arts. For a public suspicious of what we're doing here on campus, we must be bold in showing how we are offering ideas to attack the most vexing problems of our day, rather than offering ideas about attacking each other. That our approach to knowledge co-creation leads to solutions that help everyone and artistic experiences that increase our collective insight and joy. We need to remind each other and our audiences off campus that while the work of making decisions for the common good is labor intensive, it is as gratifying as tending a garden. And where our approaches to research, scholarship, the creative endeavor, and the classroom have the potential to inform how we also resolve conflict not just on a beautiful campus in Northampton, but everywhere. If, like any great teacher, we assume that we have as much to learn from each other as to teach, 
that showing respect for each other is as important as requiring it for ourselves. If we pursue approaches to life, discovery, and learning that are joyful, persistent, and curious, we cannot help but end up in a place where reconciliation is as important as accountability. This is work that our larger society is sorely in need of, and work that Smith can lead. I cannot tell you how much I look forward to learning from all of you how Smith is already engaged in some of this work and how we might lean further into it together. Let me tell you just a bit about my history. I am from a family of educators. My paternal grandmother was born in 1891 and graduated from Wiley College, one of the first black women to earn a bachelor's degree in Texas. She was trained as a teacher, but could not find a job in the Dallas public schools, initially because she was black and eventually because she was married. But she put her education and her gifts to work, homeschooling my father and his siblings until they were old enough to ride the streetcar to the segregated school. My paternal grandfather went to work when his mother died and therefore had only an eighth grade education. But he and my grandmother sent my father and his three brothers and sister to college and to graduate school. My dad became a sociologist and a university professor. My maternal grandmother attended Cuca College, a women's school in upstate New York for only one year before marrying my maternal grandfather. He too had only one year of college at Colgate before needing to leave for financial reasons. But the two of them sent their two children to college and their daughters too earned advanced degrees. My mother is a retired church musician and teacher of singing. So while education was always the backdrop to my parents' aspirations for me and my siblings, most of all, my parents hoped that my brothers and I would live our best lives. With each passing year, I have come to understand that best is not to be confused with easy or special or deserving. To live one's best life, they taught us, meant to stay in relationship, even with the people we are most annoyed by in our community. <laughs> it meant to discover ourselves in the world by engaging with work and the creative process. It meant remaining curious, assuming that we belonged, no matter where we were. It meant delighting in unexpected friendships, living authentically and ethically, taking the values of the places we found ourselves seriously, offering and receiving help graciously, and being a person for others. While I was an undergraduate at Haverford College, I took courses at Bryn Mawr and Spelman Colleges. I am so pleased to call myself a graduate of Haverford. And I also know that the classrooms of Bryn Mawr and Spelman, it was in these places that I began to truly feel this experience that my parents hoped I would own a sense of belonging, and the right to a place at each table where I found myself, even if a place had not been set for me. And that feeling grew a confidence in me to participate in the consequential conversations at those tables, encouraged me, in other words, to live my best life. These women's colleges provided me with more models of women faculty, women provosts, women presidents, and classrooms where the majority of students were women. They were not magical spaces in the sense that the deep roots of sexism, racism, classism, heterosexism, and other systems of inequality had vanished. 
we know that when we swim in these waters, each of us gets wet. But they were and continue to be spaces where a kind of magic is always possible, where faculty and students alike assume that women are capable, creative, persistent, insightful, and will become leaders in their fields, in their communities, and the world. Oh, that everyone could know that kind of magic. I thought it was magic when one day an advertisement popped up while I was browsing on social media and offered me the opportunity to purchase a sweatshirt that seemed as though it had been created just for me. It read, just a Massachusetts girl in a Pennsylvania world. <laughs> it took me a long moment to realize, with no small amount of discomfort, that it's algorithms had my number. <laughs> Needless to say, I bought the sweatshirt. <laughs> and on those rare Saturdays or Sundays, when I'm at home in the fall and winter, not heading to Swarthmore for a game or a performance, it's a favorite. I grew up in Massachusetts. I went to school in Concord, attended church in Cambridge. My mother now lives in Boston. My spouse and I applied for our marriage license in Great Barrington. Our son was born in Beverly. And on trips to visit my folks, we'd cut through Connecticut to be delivered to the Mass Pike at Springfield or Worcester. All to say that Massachusetts is home, and it will be wonderful to put the sweatshirt away and actually be home. <laughs> that this is a place where students are exposed to and prepared for lives of creativity, research, lives of the mind, and citizenship, active engagement with their communities, where they are expected to discover themselves, expected to become leaders who are as inclusive and collaborative as they are filled with conviction, and when they are not leading, expected to become the kind of followers who are passionate and prudent, analytical and inclusive where the traditions and cultures of women across the globe are not only celebrated for what, what they once were, but studied and understood for how they are now and how they are likely to change. Smith has made of itself something so much more than Sophia Smith probably ever dreamed. If we were to rely only on typical performance indicators, Smith's success has not been guaranteed. Fewer students each year choose liberal arts colleges, and fewer students still choose women's colleges. And yet here is Smith, continuing to attract more students than it can admit, to steward its healthy endowment with care, to hire and retain gifted faculty, and to graduate outstanding alums. Here is Smith, with co-educational graduate programs and a commitment to helping adult students whose education has been interrupted to complete their degrees. Here is Smith with an international reputation. Clearly, there is nothing typical about the transformative education offered by its faculty, the ambition and creativity of its students, the acumen of its administrative leadership, the loyalty and work ethic of its staff, the generosity of its board, and the devotion of its alums. When students matriculate at Smith, they make a choice not just for themselves, but for their communities and for the future. How lucky are we to be part of this whole gig? <laughs> One can simply not repeat enough. Students who study at Smith change the world. And I am honored to play a role in continuing this work. Thank you for your faith in me. I look forward to meeting each of you and to beginning our work together next year.